Kaiju number nine. This beast was introduced as one of the most dangerous Daikaiju in existence, but that was a severe understatement. Kaiju number nine's main goal is to take back the Kaiju power from the Defense Force since they turned the corpses of the strongest Kaiju in history into numbered weapons to catapult their own power further. But why does Kaiju number nine want these powers back? Is it to save his former comrades and bring them all back together? Yeah, no. He wants to take the power for himself and become even stronger resulting in this. Nani? As Kaiju number 9 is seen as a leader or even a father figure for the Kaiju, where throughout time he stood in the middle of the war against the humans. In fact, Kaiju number 9 took over the bodies of the strongest of each era, such as a shaman to then shogun and other notable figures where they aren't able to resist him. The only one who stood in his way were the ancient warriors. But what made it near impossible for Kaiju number 9 to win was an adversary in Kaiju number 8, who too had multiple hosts throughout the eras, marking the beginning of their intense rivalry. But then, of course, humans began their full frontal defense with the use of technology. By incorporating the kaiju into weapons, their fight became easier, bringing a halt to the kaiju destruction of humanity. However, kaiju number nine never gave up. His war on the human race restarted when he infiltrated the aptitude test, easily defeating Shinomiya, who at this point was by far the strongest out of all the cadets, with a released state of 46%, which already puts her into the top tier of the defense force. She was destroying every kaiju in her path until number nine made its presence known, showing its control over the other kaiju as it did the impossible. Kaiju number nine resurrected the nearby dead kaiju and actually increased their strength bringing us onto one of Kaiju number nine's most terrifying powers, its dominion over other kaiju. What the f*** does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Well, Kaiju number nine is actually the true king of these monsters. It's shown to be capable of creating and controlling kaiju, and not just weak honju or yoju, but even dai kaiju level threats. As you'll soon realize, he can control most kaiju to do whatever he wants, whether that's acting like a shield against incoming attacks or ordering them into battle. Thus, it should come as no surprise that Kaiju number nine is the most intelligent kaiju there is, becoming the puppet master of the kaiju war, continuously outmaneuvering the defense force. And so it's no surprise that after leaving Shinomiya to battle the resurrected Honju in the aptitude test, number nine began settling into human life, taking the shape of a young man and joining the place Kafka used to work at, Monster Sweeper Incorporated, preparing for his next attack months later, bringing us to the Sagamihara outbreak, where kaiju number nine set loose a bunch of yoju and hoju. However, whilst the likes of Honju Shino and Mina had no trouble facing against these, a mysterious man showed up inspecting the corpses. This was, of course, number nine. He began to realize that Kafka was making life difficult for him, as the reproductive organs placed within the kaiju by nine had been purposefully destroyed thanks to Kafka's deep understanding of the kaiju body. His plan was to use the kaiju's reproductive organs to allow them to split up and overwhelm the defense force by taking them by surprise. Now, perhaps you're asking yourself, why didn't you just revive them like he did in the aptitude chest. What is he, stupid? Well, this is one of the few weaknesses of Kaiju Manine's insane power. Reviving the dead drains him out dearly. That's not all though. He soon learned the hard way that his accuracy using his projectile weapons also took a huge hit when in his human form when faced with Ihoru. Determined to not return from his mission empty-handed, number nine reverted back to his Kaiju form and prepared to battle, hoping to bring back a Defense Force member to research on. Ihoru and Leno soon realized that they were screwed, thus radioed for backup. However, Kaiju number 9 was already one step ahead. He revealed another one of his abilities, which was to literally alter space-time and create his own mini pocket dimension, which blocked off any and all kinds of communication with the outside, whilst also stopping people from leaving. He originally created this ability to conceal himself from humanity, but the stronger and smarter he grew, Kaiju number 9 realized that it was equally as effective at hunting humanity. Humanity too. And so, with a single projectile, Kaiju number nine pierced through the Defense Force suit, and had it not been for Leno being able to react quick enough, he'd have died then and there. Realizing it was do or die, Leno locked in. 
Kaijin, but was soon hit with a reality check when Kaijin number 9 speed blitzed him, revealing yet another new form, with multiple limbs firing shots at him. Nonetheless, thanks to Iharu's bravery, the two could begin their fight back using one of Kaijin number 9's very few natural weaknesses, electricity. They fired conductor rounds at him, which, albeit only a tiny bit, made it hard for the monsters to move, giving them a chance. That being said, it was all for nothing. As Kaijin number 9 realised he was outplayed, he opted to command the dead corpses around him to form one giant meat shield protecting him. The two had lost. 